Hey everyone, this is Chris from CB Productions, and today we're gonna to be going over how to make HDRIs with the Insta360 X5 and a few other things. So all we're gonna need for this is the Insta360 X5, a selfie stick for a tripod or the Invisa stick. You're gonna need your phone, and you may or may not use a color chart. Now we all know HDRIs are used for CG and it's imperative to use good HDRIs to light up your scenes correctly. So anytime we're using VFX and we're putting CGI stuff in, we wanna make sure our HDRIs are relevant and accurate. And this is the only way we're gonna be able to light up our CGI correctly. So first, anytime you're uh, creating the HDRI, one, you wanna make sure you have your camera set up in the location of where your CGI is going to occur. So that's on set, wherever your actors are gonna be, that's where you wanna place your uh, 360 camera. Additionally, you wanna make sure it's as close to the time of shooting as possible. Meaning sometimes it's difficult. So if we're shooting in golden hour, we've got an hour of decent sun, you may or may not have to come back the next day to uh, recapture that HDRI because uh, you can't film your actors and get your HDRI in the exact same time. Therefore, anytime you're shooting and you're not gonna be able to grab your HDRI, grab your cell phone and get a photo of your area. This is specifically if we're working outside. Get a photo of your area and uh, the sky so you can mimic that the next day. If you're indoors, just make sure uh, your lighting guys have all your lighting set up prior to you grabbing your Insta360. Make sure everybody leaves the set, leaves the scene so you don't have any people in it. And uh, it's gonna be especially imperative if you're using your actual HDRI as a background. If you're only using it for lighting, that's one thing. But if your CG is gonna have reflections in it, anything in your HDRI is gonna be able to be seen in that reflection. So that gaffer guy that's standing off on the side, you're gonna be able to see him in that reflection. So make sure everybody leaves the set and you're good to go. As far as color charts go, I personally don't use them because I know my color, I know my camera, but if I'm sending any HDRIs off to somebody else to work with, I'll do one of two things. I'll one, make sure I get one HDRI with a color chart in it, and it's a matter of just placing it down on the ground, and I'll get another HDRI with no color chart in it. That way they can use the one with a color chart in it and do any color corrections and swap it out for the non-color chart one after. If you crunch for time and you just get the one with the color chart in it, you can always uh, paint out your color chart in the end. So let's go ahead and set up and get these HDRIs. So here we're using the uh, Insta360 app and uh, once you have your phone and your 360 app all set up, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the app and we wanna make sure, one, we're in photo mode. If we go up here, we wanna make sure we're on pure shot raw, that way we get that raw footage. And under your photo mode, we wanna be on manual. If we're on auto, we're not gonna be able to do this. So we wanna make sure we're on manual. And once we're on manual, we wanna go into the settings. And first thing I wanna do is I wanna drop this all the way down until it's as low as I can possibly go. And then I'm gonna to go to my ISO settings and I'm gonna change my ISO till I can barely see those lights popping through the window. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on 400. Let's go back and let's capture our first image. Go back to manual. I'm gonna move it up to capture my next image. And in doing this, we may capture anywhere from 10 to 15 images, but the more the better. So I'm gonna fast forward all these captures till we get towards the end. And you may start uh, seeing your image starting to get blown out, but I'm gonna keep capturing until I can see inside those deep shadows that are uh, around my shot. So if I look, I kind of want to get under these couches so I'm seeing inside those shadows. So I'm going to keep going and you're gonna get error messages showing, saying uh, it's so blown out that your uh, display isn't gonna show what it actually is. So I'm gonna get a few more so that's good for now. Let's go ahead and jump into our computer and finish the rest of the process. So now we're back on our computer and there's gonna be a few things you're gonna need. 
One, you're going to need Photoshop because this is what we're going to be using to uh, create our HDRIs and to get your photos. You're going to need Insta360 Studio. So if you go to the Insta360.com backslash download, you can download the 360 Studio and install it. So once you open it up, it's going to ask you to import your files. I'm going to uh, import them all. And you'll have a list of all your files. Now, one, if you're not seeing this uh, view, you're seeing the animate view where you can uh, look at your 360, select this 360 photo, and it'll be spread apart. Now, if you look at our darkest image that we took, this still is uh, a little lighter than I would like. So that's why you want to go in your camera settings and uh, change your little ISOs there and get these lights so they're just barely popping through and that's going to be your darkest image and then bracket through and if i go look at our uh, brightest image you can see it's pretty blown out but uh we can see in the shadows under here we can see in the shadows underneath down here and this is what we want and you could go even further if you want blow it out even more and you can see under our files, we have these .dngs and .insps. All we care about is these .dngs. So what we want to do is go through and select. We can hit the control button and select all these .dngs that we took. And these are all of our individual brackets. Once we've selected all those, we want to go up here to export and we're going to export a 360 photo. We're going to keep at original resolution and we are not going to check automatic horizon leveling because it may throw your photos off and we're not going to set a, a bottom logo in our batch. And if you look, our file size is going to be pretty big at 6.35 gigs. But once we have everything set up, we're going to uh, select our folder. And uh, I usually keep mine in a separate folder called Stitched. That way I can go back and delete all these because like I said, it's going to be a pretty big folder. So I'm going to go to New Folder. Living Room 01. Select that folder. Start my export. And if you want to look at the status of your export, you can uh, click on this little button up here and uh, view the status of your export. And our export is finished. And if you notice, we've got 16 images altogether. And I know a lot of people say, uh, hey, seven is what you need. Seven and some people say nine, but that's the minimum. So if you can get more, get more, because let's face it, more stops of dynamic range is better. You would never go buy a camera with seven stops of dynamic range. So once our export's done, we can go ahead and close out of Insta360 and let's jump into Photoshop. Once we're in Photoshop, we want to go to File, Automate, and merge to HDR Pro. And once we select that, we're going to get this pop up and it's asking for our files. So we're going to browse to our folder. So HDRIs, stitched, living room. And we're going to select all these files. And once we do, hit OK and it's going to populate all those files. Do not uh, select this attempt to automatically align source images because again, it's going to kind of throw those off a little bit. So we're going to leave that unchecked and we're going to hit OK. And uh, once it finishes doing its thing, we come up with this pop up window and uh, we can zoom in and look at our uh, little photo here. And these are all of our bracketed images right down here. Now, up top, we have the option to remove ghosts and uh, if we uh, kind of zoom in here, you can see what ghosts are. 
because uh, I believe uh, Nash, our little boxer here, was laying on his bed and he was moving around. So there's ghost images on his head. But again, this is the importance of making sure no living being or anything moving is in your images while you're getting the HDRI because this ghosting will happen. So you can select this, remove ghosts. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it makes weird artifacts. So your best bet is just to uh, make sure you don't have anything in your image. And down here we have the option to uh, complete a tone mapping in Adobe Camera Raw. If you have Adobe Camera Raw, you can select that and do any tone mapping you want. But I'm not going to. I'm gonna use this slider and what this is gonna do is it's not gonna actually change the colors of any tone mapping in here. It's just changing your preview image. So. If I take this and move it down to what I want my preview image to be, I can just change that. And you might get some odd artifacting in here and you see this is kind of jagged up here, but this isn't actually uh, what your image is going to look like. This is just kind of a preview and uh, it's not that great of a preview. You can see it's pretty uh, pixelated, but once we're done, all we have to do is hit this OK button. And now we have our 32 bit HDRI image. So if I zoom in, you can see it's a pretty good quality. And once we're done with that, all we have to do is go file, save as. We're going to select radiance right down here. I'm going to go to my HDRI files and living room zero one. And I also like to save these as EXRs just in case the program I'm using doesn't allow me to use Radiance files. So save as, open EXR and save. And now we have uh, both versions, the EXR and the Radiance file of our HDRI. And to be able to use this in a 3D program, we will uh, go ahead and bring up Blender just as an example. So in Blender, uh, let me go ahead and make sure I am on Cycles, GPU. And if I go down here to my World button, I can select this color and select Environment Texture. And then I can browse to my HDRIs and look for that Living Room HDR, or I could use my EXR if I want, but I'll use the HDR. And if I select my Render button, you can see we now have our HDR in our little 3D world and our cube is being lit accordingly. And this is a better example of that ghosting. If you look at uh, Nash, our little white boxer here sitting in this chair, you can see his uh, head is uh, looking around on each and every uh, photo. I know he wasn't looking at the click because he's deaf, but uh, yeah. So that is our HDR image. And if we go to our shape here, I'm going to go ahead and delete this and we're going to add a uh, sphere. So Icosphere, let's give this six and let's go ahead and uh, change our material to make it big so we can see. It's a metallic. It's a little shiny and uh, if I hit shade smooth, it'll get rid of that jaggedness. So there we go. If I go here and check my denoise on my viewport, now you can see we've got a pretty decent reflection map going on. And if you look at our actual HDRI, we got pretty decent uh, dynamic range going outside the windows. We can see all the way back to the wood line. We can even see out front, all the way out to the road. And it's pretty good. Now in our world right here, we can uh, change our strength if we want. We can reduce it. Make it as dark or as light as we want. And one thing to know about this uh, X5 camera, if you're going to use HDRs, as actual backdrops, you may want to rethink that because if we look at our uh, image here, because if I uh, kind of zoom in on some of this stuff or look, you can see our quality isn't that great on this X5. 
It's great for lighting or actual reflections of your HDRI. It works well. We can see our table underneath there. That's down there. I mean, it's uh, you can see our little fan up there. It looks it looks really nice. But the problem is is this image is still a little grainy and a little pixelated. I mean, it's not too bad, but if we want something even clearer, something we could actually use in 3D images, we would probably want to go with a higher quality camera, but you're looking at a couple thousand dollars to get better than this uh, $600 X5. So that is creating HDRIs with the Insta360 X5. I will see you in the next video.